This is a good way of finding out what they already could do, because they wouldn't say they needed to learn something if they already knew it. These are all their ideas. They knew about communion, they knew about um, comparison to Judaism, Roman influence. This is great, this is 11 year olds. Um, prophets, you know, this is great, it's all really exciting stuff that they wanted to, to learn about, what people don't know. So this is what we did, this is my class. This is a, this is a, a worksheet one of them devised and they marked it. Comparisons between Judaism and Islam. Um, this was their idea to do. This is two boys who came up with this idea of being journalists. And they were, he was doing an interview of this person as a witness of, for the Easter story. And then they set the homework. They had to write the daily a, a newspaper as a way of reporting the story. So all oh, this is their idea. And honestly, some of the work we have, this is one of the pieces of work that some students made. Some of the work which they produced on the back of it was just. It was fantastic. And this was their idea. And, you know, some of the lessons I'd turn up to, and I'd be thinking, what am I going to get today? And they would be, you know, I'd have to help a lot. Others were actually gems. So it's a very risky strategy. And some of the kids are better than others at asking questions about having the confidence to talk to a head of class. So you have to remember it's co-construction. It's not just abdication. So I realised in my first attempt that I needed to be the teacher as well. It's not just off you go, guys, I'm out of it. It's I'm with you. So we tag. It's, yeah. Did you need to model uh, for year seven, for example, model the sort of thing you wanted to say? Would you, would you just throw them in? Well, no, I, what we did is, I mean, the first one, I would have taught, say, the first few weeks and then hand over. Now we're more aware of that. So now we're more, we have more extended sessions talking about lessons, good lessons. So I'm, I'm, I don't have to model to them myself because they have all their other teachers as models as well. So we get on with it a bit more now. But yeah, we do not, we don't want to be kicking with this straight away. We get to know them a bit anyway. And so they, it's, I'm more, I, initially I used, to, I used to worry that they would be offended if I corrected them or that if I, if I bailed them out too much and they want to take ownership. And now I don't feel like that. Now I, I think it's, ne it's necessary. So if they say something that's incorrect or it's a little bit blood out of the stone and no one's saying anything, I will, I, will, I will interject, I'll help them out, I'll manage the behaviour, and I'll, and I'll be with them. But they have to be the owners of the process, the learning, the content. And it works best the more I put on them in terms of responsibility. So the homework, for example, that they set has to be a, a good homework. I'm not going to let them just give their classmates a piece of rubbish. So if it's... But I, don't, I try not to sort of pre, uh, prejudge it. I, I try to let them make the mistake rather than check it all in advance. Apart from the fact I don't have time to. I, 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 the best lessons are when I don't do anything at all because it's all good. So if we're in a lesson and I think it's not going well or homework could be better, I move on. So this was uh, another thing that they did. This is a classic example of getting stuff that you didn't realize the kids could do. So this was from year seven. I didn't know the kids could make websites. I don't know how to do it. I didn't know this time. I know now actually. I didn't know then how to make a website. This was a class, and this is, this is from a, actually my colleague Mark, who was doing it along with me. They had made Embracing Islam, clearly from the award-winning creator of Embracing Islam. Uh, they made this Embracing Christianity website, where they put all the information on it. This is their idea. Instead of telling the kids and doing a PowerPoint, they would put it on a website, and they did some interactive activities. And they set the homework on the website, so that the kids have to go online to the website, and on this it's quite a detailed thing of what they needed to do. It came with a lesson plan, so they had drafted a lesson plan. This is year sevens, and they had done this in the computer room, so aims, objectives. This is, this is page one of two pages, you know, two page lesson plan, because they had time to prepare it. You know, kids in year seven can prepare a lesson if you give them the structure in which to do it and then they run through it. So at the end of the lesson, students should be able to understand whether there's any difference between God and Islam and religions such as Christianity and Judaism. Describe at least three states of Allah. You know, these are specific learning points that they're trying to get across. This isn't just, let's just talk in some loose, rubbish way about Islam. It's solid. It's, it's, there's content in it. And then they have to create activities for the kids to learn the content. And we all were to play that we can't make this all soft and woolly. It, it, they've got to have the same obsessive objectives at the end as they would in a normal type of lesson. So, it, we love it. I mean, it's, it needs to go further, but the Year 7 work in RE is very special because it's so open-ended. And the physics work will have shown to be great if the results are as good as they would have been taught differently. 
um, because I've learned so much through doing it. And you know, I, I, I can teach my Key Stage 3 class next year in the same way. So what have, I, what have I learned that kids can do? They can deliver content. They can do traditional presentations and stuff. But they can also organise their class. They love standing up and giving the instructions. OK, in your groups, I want them to do blah, blah, blah. And seeing the students a little bit shy, standing up and having to address the class in that way is an incredible learning experience for them. They can set assessment questions. They're very good at making tests. They're very good at finding resources to do those sort of things. They can do things like demonstrations. You know, in physics and science, this is fantastic. And it's brilliant for practical work. They love getting up and telling the other class how to do that. But this is what really surprised me, is that they can do question and answer. I never realized, you, know, you wouldn't expect this to. And so they, they, they parrot teacher, teacher pet methodology in your pairs, discuss, or, okay, in your groups, come up with this, sort out, prioritize the answers, and then we'll come back later. Um, and the issue is a team, so they tag it, you know, they, someone will do this bit, someone will do that bit. And then they set home. This is the bit they enjoy the most because it feels so powerful. <laughs> We're giving you the homework. And some of the homeworks have been really exciting. The marking, people are dubious about this, but I, honestly, you look at the books that I've got with my students where they've done the marking, they really do it well, especially if you give them a framework for it, you know, what we're, what we're looking for is this, and has it been done? Things like maths questions are dead easy, just marking the answers right or wrong, but then actually giving constructive feedback. Yeah, they, they, they learn about that, and it helps them with their own thinking. And they're very good at doing things like anything to do with content, they can process that. But they can do tons of things. Um, how does this work? Um, so really, the, 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 what we've learned is you need to give preparation time. Uh, when I first started with it, I was doing almost one lesson after the other. It was co-construction, co-construction, it was a nightmare. It was too busy. You had to interspace it with your own lessons and make sure they'd have time to prepare. You've got to talk about what they've been assessed on at the end. Otherwise, it's too open and dim and woody. They don't like that. They're, they're better at it when you know you're trying to teach a specific thing. You need to talk to the people in between to make sure they're ready. You have to discuss pedagogy, or else you'll just get death by PowerPoint. It's almost the first instinct that all the kids I've ever done this with is to make a PowerPoint. Right, you're in charge of you know, new, the new topic on nuclear and stars. I will do a PowerPoint. No, you know, you don't have to make a PowerPoint. You can, <coughs> and we discuss this. And they, so we, death by PowerPoint, we've, we've banned PowerPoint as the default response to uh, a teaching lesson for them. This is key. They have to feel that it matters that they are taking the lesson. If you wimp out on this, it doesn't work. So you have to allow them to feel bad if they've not prepared properly or if it doesn't go very well, and then be prepared to bail them out. Sometimes you think they've prepared at an hour, and it, uh, after 20 minutes they say, that's it. <laughs> we, we don't know what else to do now. And so you have to say, OK, make that seem fine. All right, great. So what we'll do is effectively start off, and then you can be expected from there. So sustained over two years, one in three lessons is properly, totally owned by the students. And I making sure it's all ticking along. Um, because that's a, a healthy balance. But it still feel, feels that they are only the process and we're always thinking about what to do next and, and what they should what they think I should do. A couple of really fantastic things have happened where Students have come to me in my office and they've actually said to me, I'm a teacher, and they say, Sir, next question, what would you like you to do the input on this? Because we're not so sure about it. And then next question, Good at not missing lessons.
that yeah. Daniel. Daniel's in the script. You, you tried it, didn't you? The photograph of Daniel's script. There's no video. Pardon? <laughs> No, this is, I, I was really chuffed by this because Daniel used to be, he tried this in his lesson. So the idea that this works, you know, it's not just about the grammar school context where I'm, but it's one of the interesting places. And Daniel, I've seen this video, and these, these students talking about it. Just a few other things, I'm not, I, I don't want to talk too much about this because I'm out of time, but in, our, in my school, one of the reasons why this works is not because, um, it's not because the students are of any particular ability, it's because there is a wider context in the school's culture where this sort of thing is more normal. And I think that's really important. It's part of a wider philosophy that we share. So, for example, we have a thing called Project Lion. Look at the photographs. Yeah, here it is. This is, this is a, 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 another experience the students would all have where all the year nines are taught ICT by students in year 10 to 13 in modules that the students write and deliver. Uh, they're, they're teaching them programming and stuff that you do coding and, and raspberry pies and stuff like this, which teachers don't know how to do. I mean, none of us know how to do this. There's no teacher in my school that can do this coding. So we have a process where the students teach each other ICT. And so that's, that's an experience. So some of them have done this Project 9 teaching and or been on the receiving end of it, and so it's more normal for them to feel confident to teach a class because they've had some micro-experiences of teaching. Things like the school newspaper is totally student-run, so we don't edit it or, or censor it. It's just they organise themselves and they write it and produce it. So again, the sense of, in my school it's quite common for us to say, if you want to do it, organise it and do it. So all the house events and stuff are organised by the students, they're not organised by teachers. And so it's, it's, it's not unusual for them to lead things. We, we have a project like this Year 7 museum project where they go and do an extended bit of learning of their own choice. This is, this is they do this as a transition unit and tell them about it when they're still the six. And by Christmas they all have got to go to the British Museum with their parents and do a do a project, which is very open ended. And the, the beauty of this is that we get wonderful projects like this one and various other ones, which well we don't really know what we're gonna get, but we celebrate them. Do what you think is a great piece of work and that tells us about their standards. So again the co-construction is an extension of this. Um, choices, it all starts off with thinking about choosing. So these are, these are sort of template of the type of thing that some, of, some teachers use where you give students a choice of tasks to complete. And we, we, we layer it up so the more structure you can